Hey, this is Russ. You know, I tried to make a recording yesterday, but uh, some things stopped me from doing that. Let me roll that video right now, and then I'll come back and talk to you guys. Time for another bike ride. <laughs> Hopefully by the time you see this one, you probably would have seen the other one, where we did a forward-facing and a rear-facing camera. And the rear-facing camera facing me is, of course, the cell phone that's mounted on the cell phone mount. I did a little bit of rearranging of it. And so, uh, it seems to have a little bit too much sky compared to the rest of everything, but I wanted to straighten it out a little bit. So I kind of moved it a little bit on the uh, accessory rack. Or I should say the accessory handlebar that's on the handlebar. <laughs> but it gives a lot of sky. So I may crop some of that sky out. So as you can probably see, we're on the uh, area where there's high tension wires. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because where I need to get to the forest preserve, all the sidewalks that are under construction. <laughs> so I, I would have to ride the streets and you know I don't like riding the streets. Now, let's talk a little bit about that, okay? When I was younger, I could ride the streets and it didn't bother me. But as I get older, I guess maybe we're a little bit wiser. We have to be a little more careful with, uh, <laughs> with how cars are. Maybe when we're younger, we don't think too much about that. But as you're older, you have to think about it. So I'm going to see how they did over here because I had to go through some of the sidewalk area too to get to this other area. I'm hoping they didn't mess this all up. So you can see all this construction stuff, yeah. See, they closed the sidewalk on this thing too. So you can't even get over to the other side. And that stinks. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have to turn this bike around. I'm not gonna go through this thing. No way. All right, so I'm straddling the bike and just walking across. You can see how, how, how hard that is. All right, we're heading back. Okay, so <laughs> we're back. Yeah, all of my sidewalks have been messed up. <laughs> Every single one of them. Every sidewalk that I take to get to this forest preserve, every sidewalk that I take to get to that other path, um, yeah, they're all messed up. Which means I have to ride on the street in order to get to either one of these things. Now, luckily this morning, I was able to do that with uh, this video and there wasn't really any traffic there, so I was lucky. But I'm actually uh, out here early in the morning. It's around 10 something, I think, something like that, 10 in the morning. The, uh, the weather is gonna be warmer but I thought I'd start out early in the morning. I think it's something like 57 right now. And there's a little bit of wind. Yesterday would have been better, it had less wind. <laughs> but yeah, I was recording and uh, yeah, I went up to the area where I would go down and go underneath the bridge and all that stuff. And sure enough, it wasn't uh, something I could do. what his issue was but he seemed to have some leg problems there <laughs> so uh, so I wasn't sure where I should record you might notice too that I usually stop talking when someone else comes up to ours and uh, I don't want them thinking I'm talking to myself right So anyways, uh, I started riding on the streets, but those are residential streets. <laughs> That's not so bad, but you're, when you're riding up against cars that are running 40 to 45 miles an hour, some of them probably even doing 50, probably breaking speed limit, 
I don't feel comfortable being on the street with those guys. And unfortunately, where I live, I'm surrounded by all that type of uh, traffic. So, <laughs> I think we're gonna be stuck out on this forest preserve thing. Now, you're gonna see this stuff over and over and over. I know you're gonna get sick of it. But hey, look at it this way. When I'm in the studio, <laughs> you're looking at that background, which is usually the water background anyways. So really, what difference does it make? <laughs> at least this way, you get to see other people on the bike path. And we can go around and, and ride and, and talk. I actually like having you guys on here with me as I'm out here. It's kind of like riding with a buddy <laughs> without having your buddy actually here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's uh, still a little windy, still a little cool. It's going to warm up a little bit today. It's going to go up to 61 later this afternoon, but yeah, I wanted to start out early in the morning. Eventually, most of my bike rides will probably be early in the morning. Once the summer starts hitting, it's going to get too hot and I'm not going to want to be out here. <laughs> so the only way to do it is to go early in the morning. So we might as well get used to it. Seems to be a lot more people out on the, on the bike path today. Yeah, there's quite a few people in the morning here. I guess everyone's doing their morning walk. And it looks like I'm not the only one sniffling, because that lady seemed to be wiping her nose. <laughs> Okay, let me talk about this chuckling business thing too, because I know you guys probably are. This guy's chuckling over everything. Yeah, every little thing amuses me, quite frankly. Even when there's bad things that happen, that kind of amuses me. I always have a chuckle for you. It's just the way I am, I guess. <laughs> always laughing, always laughing about something. All right, let me give you some stats on the bike right now. I am running at pedal assist level three. My, uh, my speed gear is usually at seven. <laughs> Anything less is only good for up hills. But the thing is, is when I go up hills, I do use the throttle and pedal at the same time. Like right now we're going up a hill, I'm throttling and pedaling at the same time. So because of that, I really don't need to touch the, uh, the gears at all. I could just leave it at seven. That's why you see me never touching uh, the gears over here. Now I'm going in this direction because I noticed that most people walk in the other direction, which makes it tougher as a bike rider because you're gonna end up having to pass them and you're constantly passing people. If I go in the opposite direction of how most people walk, most people walk in a clockwise direction I'm going counterclockwise on this path I have less people to deal with <laughs> so I think you'll see me riding this direction more often than not now my hope is to uh, to keep recording for a little bit here and we also know too that the camera will shut itself off after about 16 minutes or so and now that I'm using a forward-facing uh, cell phone cell phone is of course mounted on the handlebar or I should say the accessory bar on the handlebar uh oh see now we have an issue here <laughs> okay now situations like that when you have somebody in the path and then you have a bike rider on the other side you can't pass there's no way to pass that so you have to slow down and like I said before Anytime you slow down, it's a possibility of falling. Oh, here's an interesting story. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I joined the Rad Power Bikes Owners Forum. I don't know if that's what it's called, but it's a Facebook group. And I asked the question, how many of you guys who have bought a Rad Power Bike have fallen off your bikes within the first two months or so? Something like that. Because as you know, I fell off of my bike 
from a dead stop. I stopped the bike, put my leg down, and then I fell only because I couldn't, I couldn't keep myself up because my leg was too weak at that point. And now on this forum, a lot of these people have issues too. There, there are a lot of people who have uh, knee replacements on that forum. There's people who have hip replacements. A lot of them are over 60 years old, 60 and 70 years old. So I figure I can't be the only guy who's fallen stri strictly because of my disability, right? I, I hate using that word disability now because technically I have more capability now. <laughs> All right, we have a car here. He's, he's waving me on and I'm waving him on. <laughs> So anyways, uh, I asked them, you know, how many of you guys have fallen within the first two months of owning your bike? <laughs> now they're still answering this, this question, but there's over 70 something people who have already responded. I'm not the only one who fell, okay? And my fall was due to the fact that my, my leg gave out, all right? So it had nothing to do with my riding ability. It just had everything to do with the fact that I couldn't keep my leg up uh, strong enough to, to keep me from falling over when I stopped at the intersection. So a couple people actually mentioned the same thing. They said that uh, they fell the same way uh, where the leg just kind of gave out and they weren't able to keep themselves up. A lot of them also mentioned that the, because of the weight of these bikes, they couldn't hold the weight up, <laughs> you know, uh, and jump off the bike. Oh, and many of them also mentioned that they had to jump off the bike every time it stops. Okay, that seems to be a universal thing. And a lot of people tend to want to just stay on the seat when they stop and then just kind of put their toes down on the floor. Well, you can't, you can't do that. You can't put your fo uh, toes on the, on the ground because you don't have enough strength. This bike is so heavy. So that's a common thing that I noticed that they all said. Others fell in other different ways. Uh, loose gravel, <laughs> doing things they shouldn't have been doing, going on uh, various paths that uh, you know, were, were a little bit dangerous for them, trying to keep up with other people, that type of thing. So I think the key is don't go beyond your capabilities, all right? And don't try to sit on the chair, on, on the seat, at a dead stop. When you stop, you've got to get off that bike, all right? Many of them said the step through motto actually was the best way to do it because it's easy to get off and you don't have to worry about that top bar hitting you. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something that is common, it seems. And most of them seem to have fallen in the beginning stages of their ownership of the bikes and uh, they said that you know it, it is different riding an e-bike compared to a regular bike because you gotta get gotta get used to the weight of the bike it handles differently too many people mentioned that it handles differently uh, because of that weight and uh, some of them also mentioned that the fact that the fat tires are there um, fat tires aren't very nimble in the sense that you can't just like uh, teeter-totter a little bit back and forth and keeping yourself up it's harder so uh, yeah if you ever get one of these bikes there's a learning curve for sure Here's one thing that I noticed too. I get hit in the face a lot by bugs. <laughs> one day I'm gonna eat a bug. I'm talking and bugs are flying and hitting me in the face. Let me tell you another story. <laughs> See, if you come on these rides, there's a lot of stories you get to hear from me. You know, I used to teach photography and one of the classes I taught, I taught a night photography class. And we would go right in front of the Adler Planetarium down downtown Chicago. Because uh, if you stand out there at night, you can take a real iconic night skyline shot of the skyline of Chicago, okay? And you gotta wait till, till it's really dark to do it. Anyways, 
Many times I've been out there, there's a lot of bugs flying around there. And so uh, I have to talk and I, and I use my mobility scooter too because I gotta go from student to student. We'll have like 30 something people out there. They all have tripods and they're all getting ready to take their shots. They're all spread out. So I don't wanna walk back and forth. You know, I have a bad knee as it is. So what I end up typically doing is I'll take my scooter and scoot back and forth <laughs> to, to give them help. And actually even to, just to get to that area, I have to scoot out about a mile away and scoot back in <laughs> because there's no way of going down steps with a, uh, with a scooter. So anyways, so I'm talking and of course bugs are flying and guess where they end up? Right in your mouth. I have swallowed at least, I think, two to three bugs when I was teaching that class. <laughs> yeah, these are fairly big bugs too. Because you're talking and they'll just fly right into your mouth. <laughs> kind of gross, right? Happens. So I fully expect one day, as I'm talking to you guys, I'll probably have that happen again because now I'm riding forward. <laughs> I'm gonna fly right, they're gonna fly right into my mouth again. Not looking forward to that, believe me. <laughs> so I have just passed the 200 mile mark. I'm looking at my, uh, my uh, what is this, the digital display. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll bend over a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I'm doing about 16.1 miles per hour. And if you look at the mileage, it's 201 miles. <laughs> okay. So we have break, broken the 200 mile mark. Now, when I broke the 100 mile mark, that was the, the ride that I had when I fell. <laughs> Let's hope nothing happens on this, this mile marker, all right? So I'm watching the time on my cell phone. We're about 15 minutes, and we know that the, the camera usually shuts down at around 16 minutes, something like that. So if it shuts down, don't worry. <laughs> I'll stop and I'll uh, turn it back on. <laughs> We're gonna do a couple rides around the block here. And going around this path is about almost three miles to go totally around it. We can't quite do two times around before, uh, before this camera shuts down. It usually shuts down around the same time. It's usually right around here where it shuts off. But we'll see. Now here's an interesting thing too. Because I use this, the throttle with the, with the thumb, okay, because I added on a thumb throttle device, um, my right hand tends to go numb after a while. Because it's kind of stuck in one position. So. All right, I know we're about to shut down here, so let me shut it down manually, and then I'll start it back up. So let me just find a good spot I can pull off a little bit here, and I'll shut it down and start it back up in a minute. Going about 20 miles an hour right now. Whenever there's people around, I don't like jumping off the bike. I like being out there by myself. Or if the area looks secluded, I don't like jumping off of that either. So somewhere along the line, the camera shut off. I didn't recognize that it was off. But we're back up on the road again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you too that I, I feel more comfortable on the bike now. I feel more confident on it. Um, I think the early stages, it just took some time to get used to it. It's a lot heavier of a bike than I'm used to. It's bigger, the big fat tires are different <laughs> feeling. Uh, there's a suspension on the front fork. Hello. 
and because of that um, it takes a while to get used to, the, to how the bike feels okay but I am feeling more confident on the bike I'll show you guys a little bit later how I actually start up my bike because I don't I don't uh, do it like most people do most people would just put their foot on the pedal they'll straddle the bike okay they'll put their foot on the pedal step down on the pedal and move it forward and then jump up onto the seat okay you can't really do that and that's because the weight of the bike is too much and my leg doesn't have the strength okay so because of all those things um, I can't do that So uh, what I do is I throttle while putting one foot on the pedal, but the pedal is all the way down. It's not up and ready to pedal down. Okay, I put it on the, I put it down. Then I, I hit the throttle. The throttle moves the bike forward, and then I jump up on the, onto the seat. So uh, that seems to work best for me. All right, so let me see if I can uh, kind of show you how I do that. We should be far enough forward. All right, so I stopped the bike. So here's the throttle, okay? So you see the throttle here. So I'll push down on this. Let me show you my foot. There's the foot. So it's down on the bottom there, okay? And then what I'll do is I'm going to push down on the throttle. That'll move the bike forward. And then I just step up and sit. <laughs> All right. That actually is the best way for me to do it. All right. And then I'll use the throttle to kind of get me going. Then I'll let up on the throttle and start pedaling. Now, apparently, I am not the only one to do th that does this. Because people uh, on that forum had mentioned that that's how they do it as well. Now I didn't figure this out based on what they said. I figured it out on my own, but there's a lot of commonality there. So a lot of people figured out the same thing that you really can't. Uh, you really can't. Uh, get up and ride this bike the way you normally would ride a regular bike you need a little help and that's that's the weight of the bike that's the issue with it and like I said too those fat tires are not very nimble so uh, I, I mentioned before that I, I have a hard time somehow with turning I don't turn very well on this bike compared to my other bikes and they have mentioned the exact same thing too so this seems to be a common thing with e-bikes, or at least with this bike. I might notice too that we pass the same people over and over. <laughs> That's because they're walking, they haven't even made it once through yet, and we're going through like, I don't know if this is our third or fourth time around already. big dog ahead of us. All right, let's see if we can uh, pass safely here. Oh. Yeah, did I tell you that uh, dogs like to chase bikes? <laughs> That's always the biggest fear with dogs because they will try to chase after you. And that's why whenever I pass a dog, especially a dog that size, there's a little bit of nervousness about it because if the owner can't handle that dog, that dog's coming after you. It's like that one video you saw, that one dog tried to chase forward towards the bike. That's why you need to give them enough space when you pass them, otherwise that dog is going to hit. It's going to do more damage to the dog than to me probably, but if they hit the bike, yeah, you're going over too, so you got to be careful. So we are at 203 miles right now on the bike. 
We have passed our 200 mile mark. Now typically, <laughs> they're flying uh, radio controlled airplanes above me. <laughs> I know you can't see it, unfortunately. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> ah, who knows? <laughs> I'm watching the uh, airplanes. <laughs> I've seen deer out here. I don't know, have I mentioned that before? I think it was on my first ride out here. I saw three deer two together and one separately and I was really close to them too probably within I don't know eight feet of them they don't seem to be afraid of us they do their own thing now the one thing I don't want to run into here is coyotes because I know in my, our area there are coyotes out here there's always reports of people's dogs being taken by coyotes dogs, cats, whatever. We also have uh, uh, foxes out here too. <laughs> All right. I remember uh, at our house uh, we had just moved into the neighborhood and uh, my daughter said hey there's a fox out here and then a couple days later I saw a fox too. I was, I was uh, following it with my car <laughs> as it was walking the neighborhood. It kept watching my car and I kept going slow just watching the fox. So yeah we have some wildlife out here that's for sure. And that's why I have pepper spray. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, I've got to angle down here. You see down there? I actually have some pepper spray. And that's, that's for two things. In case something like a coyote or something comes up on me or a dog, I have something to spray. But also in case you run into people who aren't up to no good, I have some spray. <laughs> So I would highly suggest you carry some as well. Learn to use it too. Don't, don't assume it works. You have to kind of spray it on something. It's, you have an idea how far, uh, how far the spray can go. And of course, don't spray it into the wind because it's going to come right back into you. <laughs> you can only spray downwind. So yeah, just being out here, I do see wildlife. I see a lot of birds flying. These are big birds too. They they kind of look like uh, they kind of look like vultures. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Crows? I have no idea. I don't know my uh, species of birds well enough. Oh, anyways, uh, I am going fishing again with my buddy Jim. We're gonna hit up uh, Lake Zurich this time. And uh, Lake Zurich doesn't have, well, okay, I take it back. Lake, Lake Zurich does have some good fish. The first time I saw someone catch a fish out there was a huge carp. I, I wouldn't doubt this thing was 24 inches or more. <laughs> it was huge. So that put a lot of uh, promise there for me. But we have never caught anything that large out of there. We've caught uh, mostly bluegill, caught a couple of largemouth bass. Um, I don't know if I caught a pike out there or not. I'm not sure. Northern pike. But they were small. So, hard to say. If we're lucky, we'll catch something. But I had some leftover worms from last time and I wanted to use them up. They're actually sitting in my refrigerator. I'm sure my wife does not like that. <laughs> That's the best way to store them. And, uh, so I said, you know, I got to use it up. So we decided that we we're going to go fishing again. So we're doing that tomorrow. Now the wind is really high right now. I can't even hear myself talk. <laughs> but I think the Sure Mike does a pretty good job because you should be able to hear everything I'm saying. I can't even hear myself. That's how much wind is blowing on me right now.
So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting used to the bike. Yeah, this hand here, <laughs> it's all tired out. <laughs> my left hand doesn't seem to have that problem. It's probably because it's not holding down the throttle. <laughs> the right hand has to push the throttle and that, uh, that tires out my right hand. It becomes numb, actually. And of course, you gotta be able to uh, push the, the handbrake too, the, the brakes. And if you uh, if you're you're so numbed up that you can't do that, that's not good. Yep, and I got hit again by another bug. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. It's gonna make it into the mouth. <laughs> All right, we're almost done to our rounds here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day for you guys. But I appreciate you guys coming along on the ride. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, follow along on these rides because uh, we'll have more things to talk about. So I'll talk to you guys next time.